Tonight is apparently the last night that uh, I will be at your service tomorrow. I'm flying to, uh, to Denmark. So, uh, inshallah, this is the last but not the least session that we are going to have here. In this very short time that I have, I'll share with you uh, a recommendation that, to the best of my knowledge, all the Imams of Ahlul Bayt have been stressing on it. If somebody asks me, after more than 30 years of studying about Islam, alhamdulillah, studying the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, salam, diverting into the ahadith and, uh, uh, and the ayat of the Quran, so many times I've come across this, that anyone from a remote area was coming to Imam Sadiq, salam. The Imam was giving him a message. Imam Baqr salam, was giving him the same message. Imam Qadim salam, the same message. And that is something that I want to share with you, inshallah, tonight. Because obviously, if we would have the honor and the pleasure of having Imam Mahdi Ajallah Raja Sharif with us here tonight, I trust that he would deliver the same message as his ancestors did. Isn't it? The message is this, that what someone with the name of Abdullah ibn Abi Ya'fu is coming to uh, Medina after finishing the pilgrimage of Hajj. And Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is passing the message to him. He says, give our salam to our followers and remind them of five things. The first, the most importantly, that Quran is almost in every page of it, is emphasizing on it, is Taqwallah. The first is Taqwallah. Taqwa means to be dutiful to God. Taqwa means to be able to guard ourselves against devils, against shayateen and general ends that are there for us. And I will inshallah come back to this very quickly. I'll just go through the list and come back. The second that the Imam is emphasizing on is Tawla Sujood. When you pray, make sure that you prolong your frustration as much as possible. Don't be too quick and rush. I was telling my daughter back home that be careful, Fatima, when you are praying, shaitan is playing with your mind and is reminding you of all what you are supposed to do and telling you, Yalla, Yalla, hurry up, hurry up, you are in a rush, it's going to be late. Just ignore it. Somebody asked Imam uh, Qadim that uh, uh, what's the way to salvation and prosperity? The Imam says that every time that you want to do something, ask shaitan, what do you think I should do? Whatever advice that he gives you, give, do the opposite. Console them and do the opposite. He says that it applies to the shaitan. Ask your shaitan and nafs, what do you think? Like somebody is bullying you and you're getting heated up to, to punch him back. Ask your nafs, ask your, your, your desire that what do you think I should do? Said, of course, punch him. Hit him. He said, thank you very much. You move away. You do the opposite. Guidance is in going against shaitan all the time. So if even someone doesn't have access to a scholar and wants to find the prosperity, the guidance the right way, 
Come on, you've got someone inside you that can help you and lead you. Of course, he's misleading you, but just go against him. Simple as this. You will find the right way. Have a love, full of sojour, prolong your uh, uh, frustration. The third that the Imam is emphasizing on is Ada'ul Amana. If somebody is entrusted you with something, make sure that you're a trustworthy person. I mentioned this last night in another session that remember that the Prophet of Islam in Mecca, pre Islamic era, among the idolaters who were worshipping idols, was known as famous title of the Prophet Al Amin, a trustworthy. That's very important. That among those who are not only they don't believe in God, they are worshipping idols. The Prophet of Islam was known as a trustworthy person. That means an idolater, if he had trusted the Prophet with something, he would deliver it back to him. Imam Zain al-Abidin says that if someone entrusts me with the sword by which my father, Abu Abdullah Hussein, was killed, I'm not going to betray him, but deliver it back to him. As Muslims, as followers of Ahlul Bayt, as minorities living in such countries, it is an obligation upon us to, be, to maintain this trustworthiness. So that non-Muslims, they know us that this Muhammad, this Ali, this Ahmad, with all the Islamic names that we have, this person in this factory, in this company, at, at this uni, he's a very trustworthy person. He's not there to cheat us. Adal Amana, the third, the fourth, the Imam says that, Sadr al-Hadith, tell the truth. Again, in your community, in, among your friends, as a minority, but over there you are known to be a very honest person. That they refer to you as sadiq, an honest person. And finally, the Imam says, Husn al-Jawad. Husn al-Jawad means that being nice uh, to your neighbors. That even among any center here, programs that we have, we have to make sure that we are not disturbing our neighbors. If you hold any majlis at home for Abu Abdullah Hussein, which is very rewarding, but we've got to be very careful that parking does not disturb the neighbors. We don't become a nuisance to our neighbors. Husn al-Jawad is very important. Otherwise, we are not really introducing Islam, introducing Ahlul Bayt Brothers and sisters, we are living at the time, especially for you, the younger generation, there's a big challenge ahead of you and in front of you. And that is the challenge that you have because of the age of information. That sin, and vice and virtues are all exposed to us. Today, as much as you don't have any problem accessing the office of any of the Maraj who are residing in Qom or Najaf, Likewise, you have no uh, difficulty accessing any of the, excuse the, the expression, any of the porno sites. In fact, perhaps those sites are popping up more than Islamic sites. The challenge that we have against shaitan is much more stronger these days, isn't it? But what it requires is that taqwa Allah, the, the fear of God that should be within us, a police that should be within us. Once upon a time, if at all, at home we had only one telephone line and had a cable, was in the lounge room, and everyone had to access it. There was only one mailbox that all the mails were coming to that. Today, every single person has at least one mobile, if not more. Dad doesn't know the password of the mobile of his kids, and everyone has an email address that nobody knows what comes in, what goes out. The only way to maintain our spirituality, the only way that we can maintain our religion is by having that taqwa within us. This is taqwa al This is the piety of the heart. Piety of the heart, it means a sort of piety that has penetrated in my heart. That when I'm sitting in front of my computer at my desk and the screen and pops up comes, whether my dad is watching, my wife is watching, my husband is watching, my brother is watching, or no one is there. Let's say I'm in my bedroom locked, no one is there, but I know this ayah. Does he know not that God, God is watching? Because God is watching, that suffices. I don't need to worry about anyone else. So what we need to do is to develop this sort of understanding within ourselves, the presence of God. Rahmatullah Imam Khomeini, he used to say this, that the, the whole world is in the presence of God. Therefore, in the presence of God, be ashamed of sinning in front of God. If a six-year-old boy is in the room, you watch what you watch. 
you watch what you say, you watch what you do. It's so embarrassing and in fact I have to question my faith in God that God is watching and I'm so careless. I watch what I'm not supposed to watch, do what I'm not supposed to do. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So my humble advice, quoting from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt for you and for myself, is that we need to be away and keep ourselves aloof and away from sinning in as much as possible. Not only don't sin, don't even think about sinning. Don't let it come to your heart. Maintain presence of God. This is one of the ways that we can maintain it. Remember that any time that we are allured to do something, ask your shaitan, what do you think I should do? And do the opposite. And in order to be able to do that also, Rahmatullah Alay, uh, Ayatollah Bahjad, one of the very mystic of our modern time, he was saying that you need tawassul a lot. You need to be in touch with your present Imam at all times. One of the sisters in Sydney recently, she had a very good dream, she was in Hajj. And she told me that she had a dream, and the dream they have told her that if you want to maintain your religion and your spirituality in Sydney, to remain a good Muslim, remember that every day and night you have to do tawassul to Ahlul Bayt She was told in particular to Imam Ali alayhi salam, but I said to her that Imam Ali is Abu al to all the Imams of Ahlul Bayt tawassul is very important. We leave with your present Imam. Remember that the Imam is present. Yarawnahu wa la ya'arifunah. It may happen that sometimes in your life you see the Imam but you don't recognize him. Even if it doesn't happen for you and I to see him, which of course we don't recognize normally, have no doubt that he will see us. Because he is present. He is not away. Imam, Imam al-Hujjah Allah Farajah Sharif is not living away. He is living with the community. He is traveling around. And at the time of the scene I have to be again conscious of this that would I do this really if Imam was watching me? No way. Impossible. So the first step of it was feel the presence of God, also feel the presence of the present Imam. Otherwise, why do we call him the present Imam? The Imam is not present if I don't consider him present. It's not by name that Imam al-Asr, Imam al haber that we say, he's present, that means he's watching. And there's an ayah in the Quran about it. قُلِ اعْمَلُوا فَسَيَّرَ اللَّهُ وَعَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Every time that we are doing something, Allah, God, how many witnesses are there? Imagine a person that is going to a store and is stolen something, not realizing that there are so many cameras everywhere. They are watching him. And the guards are watching to see how far he wants to go. And he is idiot. He is ignorant. He doesn't know that he is being recorded fully. Before he steps out of the store, he is caught. He will be arrested. Likewise, the Imam, apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, that is Muhayt and is encompassing all what we are doing, the Imams are watching us. The Prophet of Islam is watching us. Allah Akbar, how many witnesses are there? So that room that I told you earlier that my bedroom locked and no one can step in, that's not in reality true. In reality, there are so many witnesses. Let me add to it and finish it off, inshallah, here. The computer itself, the monitor of my computer itself is an object that on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it talk. Antaqana Allahu ladhi antaqa kulla shay. The Almighty God will make it talk. The same God has made who has made everything talk. If God was able to make my tongue and my, my body to be able to talk and for you to hear, the same God is able to make this monitor talk itself. Huh? So, in reality, there are so many witnesses and we just need to be aware of all the witnesses to be able to watch what we are doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to practice what we preach. I'm talking for myself and to practice what we hear, inshallah. Bihaqi sahib al-asri wa zlama. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Allah. Because it's the last night tonight, let me take you to Karbala. Imam al-Hujjah Jalala Farajo Sharif is the one and only who has wept and cried for Abu Abdullah Hussein more than anyone in her son. Over a millennium, can you imagine? Almost 200, 1200 years or so has passed since the tragedy of Karbala, since the occultation of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Imam al-Hujjah Jalala Farajo Sharif. 
And the Imam himself, in a ziyarah that is narrated from him, he says, Bala and Dubanaka Sabahan Balasa, Allah. We mourn and commemorate for Imam Hussein only in Muharram. Imam al Hajjah al Jalal al Sharī says that every morning and evening of my life and such a long life, may God uh, hasten his appearance. Imam has been weeping and crying for Abu Abdullah Hussein. I said weeping and crying, but look at what he says. Instead of shedding tears, the Imam says, I'm shedding blood in the agony of your tragedy. The Imam says that this is my lifestyle, let I continue this until Hatta Amut Bela'atil Musab wa Ussatil Iqtia. I keep crying and weeping for you. If you read the Ziyarat al Nahi, subhanAllah, so well the Imam is describing the scene. Like as if he was there watching it exactly what's happening. And therefore the Imam says that I keep crying and weeping until I die of this grief and the agony of the tragedy of Karbala. Of all the Masa'ib that Imam al Hujjah Jalallah Faraju Sharif lies, one of them that is Musibat al Wada'a. The, the tragedy of the final farewell of Abu Abdullah al Hussein that Imam Sahib al Asr was Zaman loves it much. And I'm quoting this from the late Ayatollah Marashi Najafi that it is in his will, and his will now is available on, the, on, on his website. That he said that after I die, when you are taking my body for the final farewell to the haram and shrine of uh, Sayyid Ma'asum in Rome, Put one side, uh, uh, tie one side of my turban, my imam, to the shrine of Sayyidina Ma'asume, and another side to my janaza, to my body. And then read Musibat al Wada for me. Because this is a Musibah that my grandfather and uh, Imam al Hujjah Jalla Farajushan loves it much. What is that Musibah? That Musibah takes us to the afternoon of Ashura. If you now close your eyes and open the eyes of your heart and imagine the scene as I'm describing it for you. Assalamu alaykum ya Aba Abdullah. In the afternoon of Ashura, Allah Akbar. If you can imagine the holy body of Abu Fadl Abbas just at the bank of Euphrates, Ali Akbar on one side. Even Ali al Asghar and the infant of Abu Abdullah Hussein was killed. No one was there anymore. And the painful, painful cry of Abu Abdullah Hussein would be heard. Hal min nasrin yansurni. Hal min zabbin yadubbu ala haram rasulillah. Imam Hussein is crying for help. And then he comes towards the tents of the ladies and children. Ya Zainabu, Ya Umm Kulthum. Ya Sakinatu, Ya Fatima, Ya Ruqayya, Ya Allah. They heard the cry of Hussein. They would love to come and see him, but at the same time, they know what is this call for, so they are wondering whether they should step out or not. <laughs> then the ladies, they come, Zainab, Sakine, Fatima, Rughayya, all of them are surrounding Abu Abdullah and Hussain. Mahlal, Mahlal, Ya Akhi, Hatta Atazawada Meg, Zainab, she cries out, she says, my dear brother, don't rush in, wait, wait, let me take more from you. Brother, we have lived together over 50 years. You remember it? Even when I got married, I put it in the conditions of my marriage that even if you happen to travel, I will travel with you because I cannot stand it to live without you. My dear Hussein, now how can you leave us alone, Ya Hussein? <laughs> <laughs> they come and they're holding the legs of the father, Dad, Daddy, don't leave us alone. And Imam Hussein, Ya Allah, imagine the test that God is putting him through. Of course, he loves it. As well. Of course he loves his daughter. If you have a child, if you have a daughter, you know what I'm talking about. He loves them all, but at the same time, he loves the Almighty God more because he knows that this is a test for him. And therefore, he turns around and says to his sister, Ya 
does it enough. Be careful, don't make sure that the patience is not taken away from you. Imam Hussain Salaam put his hand on Walaya, the divine hand. He's put his godly hand on her chest and calm her down. And after that, he's advising her, telling her that what is going to happen to him after her, and that she's responsible for all what has happened to the children and ladies. Zainab Salamullah Alayhi as she's shaking, as she's in tears, she tells Allah that she says, my dear brother, Ya Hussein Ibn Aum, Ibn Abzal, Wutarra Ayla. فَقَدْ تَجِدُنِي كَمَا تُحِبُّ وَتَرْضَى My dear brother, rest assured that you shall find your sister as you wish to find her. I promise you that I will endure patience. عَلَى لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ وَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا أَيَّا مُنْغَلَبٍ يَنْغَلِبُونَ اللهم كُنْ لِوَلِيَّكِ الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا معينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, for hospitality. And I'm so sorry that the time was so short. And inshallah, tomorrow I'm flying away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you all for the sake of Islam. Wa jazakumullah khayr al-jazam. Assalamu alaikum jamiya.